All right, today I've got a simple and fun game mechanic for you. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a Zelda health bar. And so here I have a little demo scene for you, which I'll play through. All right, so first we can pick how many hearts we want to start with, and I'll say 10. And here you can see those hearts appear. I can then type in a heal amount, I'll say two, and a damage amount, and we'll say 1.5. Now when I click the down button, you can see that one and a half hearts gets removed from our health bar. And then when I click the up button, you can see that two hearts get added. Now I can type any float value into these input fields, but in Zelda, each heart is divided into fourths. So I could type 5.25. Now you can see we now have four and a fourth heart. And so now I'll show you how to create this game mechanic, but if you'd like to skip ahead and just get the finished product, I've added this game mechanic to our health bar unity package, which you can purchase from our online store. Now to get started, the first thing that we need to do is create a UI canvas which you can create by right clicking in your hierarchy, going down to UI and selecting canvas. Now the only change that I've made to this canvas object is I've set the UI scalar mode to scale with screen size and I've set the reference resolution to 1080 by 1440 and I've dragged the match slider all the way over to height. We then need to create a UI panel so we can right click on our canvas object, go down to UI and select panel. I've then renamed this panel to Zelda health bar and I've anchored this panel to the top left corner of our canvas. I've then also changed the pivot of this object to zero in the X and one in the Y. I've then zeroed out the position and I set the width to 1000 and the height to 200. You'll then want to attach a grid layout group component to this object. And I've set the cell size to 40 in the X and 40 in the Y and the spacing to 10 in the X and 10 in the Y. After this, we'll then need to create a C sharp script which will attach to this object. And the script that I've created, I've called Zelda health bar. And once it's created, you can drag it onto your Zelda health bar object. But we'll come back to the script after we create a few more objects in our hierarchy. The next thing that we need to do is create the heart container prefab. This is a UI image. So you can right click on your panel object, go down to UI and select image. I've then renamed this object to heart container. And I've set the source image, the image component, to this heart sprite, which you can download for free off the internet. We then want to set the color of this image to be a dark gray or black. We'll then create the fill object for this heart container, which will be another image object. So you can right click on your heart container, go down to UI and select image. I've then renamed this object to heart fill. We want to set the anchors of this object to be all four corners of its parent object. And then we'll zero out the left, top, right, and bottom. We then want to set the source image to the same heart sprite but we'll leave the color white. We'll then also change the image type to filled. The fill method is radial 360. The fill origin is top, and we've unchecked clockwise. To double check that this heart container fills in the right direction, we can just drag the fill amount slider and see how it looks. After this, we'll go back to our heart container object where we need to create a new c -sharp script. This script I've called heart container. And once we have this script created, we can add it to this object and we'll open it up. Now inside the script, we need to add one namespace at the top, which is using unityengine.ui. We can then create three variables. The first is a public heart container variable called next. We're gonna use this variable to create a single linked list of all our heart containers. We then need to create a float variable with a range of zero to one, which I've called fill, and a serialized field of type image, which I've called fill image. We can then actually remove the start and update functions. And next we'll create one public function with a return type void, which is called set heart. This function needs a parameter of type float called count. And inside this function, we want to set our fill variable equal to count. We'll then set the fill amount of our fill image equal to fill. This changes that slider in the inspector. We'll then subtract one from our count variable using count minus minus. After which we need to check to see if our next variable does not equal null. So I have if next does not equal null. If this is true, then we want to call the set heart function on the next heart container in our single linked list. So I have next.set heart and we're passing in our count parameter. Now while this function looks very simple, which it is, it's still doing some pretty nifty stuff. And I'll walk you through it in our demo. Now once we have our single linked list established, we'll call the set heart function on the first heart container in our single linked list. The count parameter is then saved into our fill variable, which has the range of zero to one. And so if the count value is greater than one, then it just becomes one, and the current heart is set 
to the full fill. We then subtract one from our count parameter and pass it on to the next heart, and that keeps happening until our count parameter becomes less than one but greater than zero, in which case our fill variable will be some fraction. In this case, it's 0.5. And so the current heart gets set to that fill amount. We then subtract one more from our count variable where it becomes negative. And when our negative count value gets saved into the fill variable, it then just becomes zero. And so every heart after this has a fill amount of zero. Now once you have this script created, we can save it, and we'll go over to our Zelda health bar script. In this script, we need to add six variables. The first is a singleton of this script, so I have public static, Zelda health bar, which I've called instance. Next, we need to create a serialized build, which I've called game object, and this is for our heart container prefab. We then need another serialized build, which is a list of type game object, which I've called heart containers. We'll then create an int called total hearts and a float called current hearts and a variable of type heart container called current container. Once we have these variables created, we can then initialize our singleton and our heart containers list. And so in the start function, I have instance equals this and heart containers equals new list of type game objects. We'll then create a function for setting up our heart containers and our single linked list. This is a public function with a return type void, which I've called setup hearts. This function then needs a parameter of type int called hearts in. Inside this function, we want to first clear out our list variable. So I have heart containers clear. We then also want to destroy any heart container objects that are a child to this object. So I have for int i equals transform dot child count minus one i is greater than or equal to zero i minus minus inside this for loop we're calling destroy and we're passing in transform dot get child we're passing in the current i index then dot game object we then want to set our total hearts variable equal to hearts in we'll also set our current hearts variable equal to our total hearts but being cast as a float after which we need to create another for loop for instantiating our heart containers. So I have for int i equals zero, i is less than total hearts, i plus plus. And inside this for loop, we first want to instantiate a new heart container prefab. And so I have local variable of type game object called new heart, and I'm setting it equal to instantiate, and we're passing in heart container prefab for the first parameter and transform for the second. This will make our new heart container a child to the object that this script is attached to. We then want to add our new heart container to our list, and so I have heart containers.add, and I'm passing in new heart. We then have an if statement where we're checking to see if the current heart container does not equal null. If it does not equal null, then we've already been creating heart containers, and so we need to set the next value of the current heart container to be our new heart. And so I have current heart container dot next equals new heart dot get component and we're looking for the heart container script. After which we can change our current heart container variable so that it's equal to our new heart container. This will make it so that the next time we go through this for loop, we're setting the next variable of the last previous heart container created. And so I have current container equals new heart dot get component and we're looking for a heart container. This is all for establishing our single linked list. And so outside this for loop, once we've established our single linked list, we want to change the current container to be the first heart container of that linked list. And so I have current container equals heart containers, and we want the zero index dot get component, and we're looking for heart container. So now that we've created the function for initializing everything, let's create a function for setting the current health. So this is a public function with the return type void, which I've called set current health. This function has a parameter of type float called health. And inside this function, we want to set our current hearts variable equal to health, after which we can call the set heart function on our current container. So I have current container dot set heart, and I'm passing in our current hearts. Now this would be for if you want to manually set your player's current health to a specific value. And calling the set heart function on the first instance in our single linked list, We'll do that recursive calculation where it goes through all the hearts, setting the fill amount. Next, let's create a function for adding health. So I have a public void function called add hearts. This function has a parameter of type float called health up. And inside this function, we want to take our current hearts variable and do a plus equals health up. This will add these two values together. 
We then have an if statement where we're checking to make sure our current hearts isn't greater than our total hearts. So I have if current hearts is greater than total hearts, we then want to set our current hearts equal to our total hearts being cast as a float. And then outside this if statement, we want to recurse through all our hearts again. So I have current container dot set heart and I'm passing in current hearts. We'll then create a function for removing health. So I have public void. This is called remove hearts has a parameter of type float called health down. Inside this function, we're doing pretty much the same stuff as our add hearts, but instead of plus equals, we have minus equals. And for our if statement, we're checking to see if current hearts is less than zero. If it is, then we wanna set current hearts equal to zero. And finally, we'll create one more function, but for adding a heart container. So I have another public function with the return type void called add container. Inside this function, we want to instantiate a new heart container, and so I have a local variable of type game object called new heart, and I'm setting it equal to instantiate and passing in heart container prefab for the first parameter and transform for the second. We then want to set the current container variable to be the last heart container in our single link list. And so I have current container equals heart containers. And we're looking for the index heart containers dot count minus one. This will get the last heart container in our list. I then have dot get component and we're looking for a heart container. We can then add the new heart to our list. So I have heart containers dot add and I'm passing in new heart. We then have an if statement where we're checking to see if current container does not equal null after which we want to set current container dot next equal to new heart dot get component and we're looking for a heart container outside this if statement we then want to reset our current container so that it's holding the first heart container so I have current container equals heart containers and we're looking at index zero dot get component and we're looking for heart container we can then add one to our total hearts so total hearts plus plus and then we want to give the player full health. And so I have current hearts equals total hearts. And then we want to recurse through all our hearts. And I'm just using the set current health function and passing in current hearts. Now, each of these public functions you can call from anywhere in your game using the singleton of this class. And I've provided example codes before each function. And so you call the name of the class, so Zelda health bar, then dot instance which is our singleton, then dot the public function, so set current health or add hearts, and you pass in some value. And once you have this script created, we can save it and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we want to select our heart container object, and we just need to set the fill image variable equal to the heart fill object, which is a child to our heart container, after which we can make a prefab out of this object by dragging it into our project window. We can then remove it from our hierarchy, and we'll select our Zelda health bar object. For this object, all we need to do is set the heart container prefab variable equal to the prefab that we just created. And then we can create a prefab out of this object. Now I've also created a simple demo for using this game mechanic. This demo has three input fields and four buttons. I've then created this demo script called demo Zelda health bar, in which I have three variables, an int and two floats. I then have a public function for each input field where I'm setting our variables to the values that were passed in. And I have a public function for each button. And so this function is for initializing the heart containers. And as you can see, I'm using that example code that I've provided. I have Zelda health bar .set hearts, and I'm passing in our total variable. I then have a public function for adding hearts, removing hearts, and adding a container. But once again, if you're planning on using this game mechanic in a project that you're creating, then all you have to do is call these functions wherever you want to use them in your project. And so for example, if your player takes damage, you would call this line of code. If your player heals, you would call this line of code, and so on. But now that we've created this game mechanic, let's demo it one more time. All right, so I can enter in the number of hearts that I want, we'll say 20. I can then enter in a heal amount, we'll say 5.25 and a damage amount, we'll say 3.75. Now as I click the down button, you can see hearts are subtracted. And as I click the up button, hearts are added. I can then add more heart containers. And everything's working. And I hope you enjoyed this lesson on how to create a Zelda health bar in Unity. If you did, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And make sure that you're subscribed to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. 
Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.